What's going on, everybody? <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are. Hope y'all are doing well. <laughs> y'all heard me running around to get the iPad. Uh, I gotta figure out how to isolate my mic. Hold on. Like, I thought that would... That didn't do it. Like, I thought that would chill the mic, but it doesn't. Hold on, let's do this. There we go. All right. So now I now I can see how the mic gets muted. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. Yeah, you heard me running around to get the iPad. I didn't know where my iPad was. It was behind the green screen. Got it. We're good. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? So many folks in here. Let's go. Hold on. Let me uh, let me get this set up here. Alrighty. <laughs> How are Mashi and Simba? Mashi and Simba are doing well. Uh, Mashi, <laughs> we like to hear you scamper. Uh, Mashi is, uh, she's always good, but she she's in she's always in like pain. She has some issues with her back, and she has some uh, some like tumor growth that she has, kind of like all over her body. So we keep the drug we keep her drugged up, and uh, as long as she's drugged up, she's doing good. <laughs> Happy Thursday, everybody. Hey, Daddy Yankee. Uh, we had some folks get in here before I even got in here. I just want to say thank you real quick. BB Fabulous. Hey, thank you for the five gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Electro Jesus. Big O O O. Yeah. Thank you for the nine months. Thank you for being here. Maybe acupuncture. Yeah, we were looking into like doggy massage. It's like a, it's a thing. I didn't know it was a thing, but it's a thing. And so we're trying to get that going for them. Hey, I appreciate that, BB. We give CBD to our doggers and it helps. Yeah, they have these like CBD treats that they take at night. Um, so hopefully that's helping too. They do have those treats at night that we give them. And with Simba, since he's a shepherd, uh, they're on like joint supplements too. Funny, hey, thank you for the 10 months. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Ooh, the animated emotes. I gotta I gotta get some animated emotes made. What should the animated emotes be? Chat. What what should we make our animated emotes be? Like what should it be? Should it be like like somebody waving? Should it be like giving Bob an arm? I don't know. What do you think some animated uh, emotes should be? Winking Leon. <laughs> Sound effects seem to be higher volume than everything else. Yeah, they should be a little, a little bit higher, but let's see if we can turn them down a little bit. Leon headbang. <laughs> Your face sliding from the left. Hey, Memphis. Thank you. You too. Party Bob. <laughs> I like those. Uh, let me see the uh, alert volume here. It's at 85. Oh, that's sound alert. Let's see. Alert box I have on 100. Let me turn it down. Put it on 90. Hopefully that does a little bit better. There we go. Party Bob, like the party parrot. Yes. All right. That's that's a gold one. I like that. Array toaster. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just like a toaster, like getting bigger. That's a good one. Vomit code emote, definitely need that. Hey, Fox, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. I got a little little coffee going today. Little Leon the Big Leon, like a Power Rangers transformation. <laughs> That'd be a good one. I've never set up the better TTV. People have asked for it in the past. I've never turned it on. I don't know. Do you feel like it would attract too many memers? I don't know. Not that the memers aren't welcome here. I just don't know how it would change chat at all. Maybe we'll try it. We'll try it next week and see if people like it or not. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, Nox. Yeah. Big Leon is a little Leon reminder. Yeah, moats that like tell me to swap when I forget. 
That'd be funny. Uh, you wouldn't have missed too much about last stream, Rockefeller. Rockefeller last stream was a lot about kind of just trying to get some spicy Leon energy out, trying to get folks to take that first step in their in their hunt and starting the application journey. And then we hinted at a little bit of uh, Big O. But tonight we're gonna see some more Big O. We're gonna kind of review the things from last night. We're gonna see like a real world example. We're gonna talk through some issues that show up with JavaScript or kind of just thinking through the big things in JavaScript. It's gonna be chill. I don't think stream will go all the way to the end. <laughs> uh end them early or end early emotes for sure but um i think that i want to get through the big things the important things the things that kind of blew my mind when i was first learning javascript and then once we get through those things uh we'll we'll end a little early so that you can do the homework i want to make sure folks have a chance to do the homework and i know everyone doesn't get a chance over the weekends to do it so i want to leave a little bit of time towards the end for you to kind of dig into the homework as well <laughs> Alrighty. Simba going to town in his Kong would be a good animated emote. A Simba emote? We need a Simba emote and a Mashi emote. That's the, those are definitely ones I need to get prepped. we writing tests all day. Just snapshots or superpowers. Ooh. I love it. <laughs> we don't end early. <laughs> I love that catch of Alright, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, tonight is all about Big O. I'm going to chill the music here a little bit. So it's all about Big O. It's about feeling confident with Big O. It's about kind of understanding how you might use it to approach our problems. And that's it. Uh, the big disclaimer for tonight that I always like to bring up is that Big O is a sprinkle or a cherry on top. Most of you won't go super deep with it in your interviews because we're not really shooting for fang or top tier tech companies if you are kudos to you don't let me don't let your dreams be dreams go after it but for the bulk of the places that we're interviewing it'll be a cherry on top not a requirement and so i've brought in lots of folks to talk to you all uh, so you didn't have to hear it from me that they didn't even have algorithmic questions that they didn't even they might not even knew what big o was when they went into these interviews that still got wonderful jobs so uh like I said last class, there's a lot of fear around this stuff. I want to show it so that you can become a better engineer, that you can think through problems a little bit more critically, but know that what you have right now is more than enough. We're adding the little sprinkle on top. Can I use Big O to solve my relationship problems? Uh, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll see that tonight. We're, we're going to see a problem that I have tonight and once that problem is solved i'm sure my relationship with my wife would be a lot more smooth so maybe maybe we can use big o to solve our relationship problems <laughs> big o is a guesstimate anyway exactly exactly we're going to be talking about that tonight too the guesstimate it's not it's not a hard science you're not we're not digging into the math here if you want to dig into the math uh, i love mit's like introduction to algorithms course they have the or the math for computer science course excuse me uh that goes way deeper into it you got to know your 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 logarithms and all that fun stuff so all righty folks how's everybody doing before we before we jump into it how how are folks doing i want to hear how you're doing and have you taken that first step in the application process have any of you since Tuesday, taking a step towards getting that job. Hanging in there. All right. I dig math. You have your technical tomorrow? Let's go, Sheenan. I'm okay. Didn't get the next round, that's all right. One to 60. Still pushing. Pretty decent steps are happening. Update your resume. Okay, I'll take that. I've been sliding into people's DMs on Twitter. Let's go. Starting to get hit up on LinkedIn. That's a good sign. Knocking on doors, getting rejections. That's what we're here for. Recruiter email me, so I'm going to reach out the chat. Nice. Final round with two companies. Let's go. 
Got to, got to, you want to finish up some of your full stack? Okay, I see you. Updated resume, two apps. Doing all right. Reached out to five hiring managers. All right, let's go. Add it to the hit list. Okay. Nine out of 60. That's good. You're, you're approaching that 10 number, right? The, you got the 10 bad ones out. Getting back into the group of things after falling off. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. All right. <laughs> also did a blog with hash node. Hey, let's go. Also exclamation point hash node in chat. Best place to get started blogging as a developer sponsoring this community and our $5,000 Uno tournament of champions. Uh, if you haven't signed up for the tournament yet, you're missing out. End of this month. 5k on the line playing uno you can't make this shit up let's go got invited to a react test on hack rank okay all right so we're doing good we're doing all right folks i like to hear that that's awesome all right let's go ahead and dive into it i'm going to go to little leon like i said i want to get through this stuff have good conversations about it and then leave some time at the end So tonight's all about digging deeper into Big O. We got some housekeeping to do before we jump into that. Uh, we always start off here with questions. Uh, any questions? I know we've been doing the stand up. If you're on Discord and you're part of the 100 devs portion of our Discord community, all you have to do is go to the join 100 devs and then all those channels will open up for you once you click those emotes. Uh, we've opened up the daily stand up and the daily stand up chat. So even if you're not participating in Mega Summer, you can still come to the stand-up if you would like. Uh, and we do normally answer a lot of questions there, but since we have way more folks here on stream than we do in that channel, any questions? Did you mean to set up our meeting for the 27th? No, I probably had my calendar open <laughs> for the, the, the tournament and booked it for that Friday. I'll, I'll correct it after stream. We can go to stand up. Yep, you can. You should see the, the channels. Uh, as long as you're in the 100 dev section, you should see those channels. Will the UNO tournament be winner take all or divide among the top three? Uh, the final table will all be in the money. So as long as you make it to the final table, you're in the money. The last UNO tournament that we did before, we had a, a loser's bracket as well. So even if you lose your first game, there's still a chance for redemption to come back towards the end. Is there a link to the big O slides? If you do exclamation point slides here in chat, you have access to them. There's both a live link where I can kind of control what you see next. And then um, if you just want the regular slides that you can move through yourself, the link's there as well. How do I start with open source projects? I don't have any experience working in group coding projects. Uh, there is, we have a class on kind of getting your first contract or open source. So you can definitely find that on YouTube, but I really like, uh, if you just Google first timers only, they have a bunch of repositories that are really welcoming and really encourage first time contributors. So find one that has like an active discord or Slack community and start contributing to those projects. Cause those people will actually help you get your first commit in so that's first timers only. Oh no, <laughs> night, night bots popping off right here. All right, rhetorical question, but I want to hear you verify. I worked for a startup last year working on the UI of a project that never saw the light of day. I cannot show any work from the project, but I can get one of the senior devs to vouch for my work. I definitely should put this on my startup on my resume. Absolutely, yeah. A lot of times when you work at companies, you can't show the things that you worked on. But as long as you're not violating an NDA, you might be able to talk about them. And so just make sure you're not violating anything that was part of your contract. But yeah, putting that experience, you worked there, all that should be fair game. Yeah. And also reach out to that senior dev, see if they'd be willing to be a reference. Is it possible to hit the point of diminishing returns on practicing data structures and algorithms? Absolutely. Um, 
at, at some point it's just you, you know everything you you're just kind of keeping it fresh and then it's about finding it's it's more effort should be going into your hit list and networking for those applications because then once you feel comfortable with your data structures and algorithms once you feel comfortable with your methods you should be actively trying to get more interviews and that's gonna be way more impactful than grinding out more leak code especially as an entry-level engineer uh there is a there is a networking or like events thing on discord uh if you go to let's see there's like the code together channel um that people will share those type of things in yeah resources is the big channel i think most people would throw those things into all right Alrighty, folks got through some of the questions here if you have more that i did not answer we always have our office hours on sunday 1 p.m eastern time here on stream happy to answer any of your questions there Fox, you got this. Come on. You got this. Alrighty. Let's keep pushing, folks. Uh, for those that want to be added to Mega Summer, just a reminder, you can do exclamation point Mega. Uh, this is if you want me to be a technical reference. There's some things you got to do, uh, but fill that out. Get added to some special channels. I'll be adding more folks this evening. We got four more major classes to go. Then we're switching gears to some agency work and some other fun stuff. We're gonna keep it going though, no fret. We ain't going anywhere. Friday, we have our tea spilling session. So tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, that's in our classroom. Saturday, we're doing our code jam, uh, which will be one o'clock in our classroom. Uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different for the code jam tomorrow. Uh, that that we did behavioral last time, we're going to be doing some kind of big O practice tomorrow. So if you want to practice your big O notation, practice evaluating kind of your basic algorithms, come to our code jam on Saturday. We only go for two hours just to get some extra practice in. And then of course, Sunday is our office hours at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Cool mentioned earlier that we have our daily question daily stand up those channels are open if you're in the 100 devs portion of discord if you're not on our discord exclamation point discord in chat uh, will get you access to that 3,000 plus people that want to see you be successful in learning how to code uh, you put in the work we'll be here to help cool more one-on-one -on -one slots are open so if you are doing mega summer the calendar is open you can find that link in the announcement channels of mega summer uh, once we get through August, uh, I'll open up my normal calendar again to everyone. So once we get through like August, mid-September, it'll go back open to everyone. Different, do you not have VIP? Let's give in different VIP real quick. Hold on. So you can post links. There you go. And if you got VIP, so you can post links. I saw you sharing first timers only. Alrighty. If you haven't heard, <laughs> if you haven't heard, uh, I'm going to say one more time just because we got some folks that are joining us today that weren't able to join on Tuesday. Hash Note is our next new biggest sponsor, uh, and they are sponsoring our UNO Tournament of Champions, the $5,000 UNO Tournament for our community. Uh, if you would like to enter, right? If you would like to enter, exclamation point uh, hash node, right? Exclamation point hash node uh, will give you the ability to enter. There's two things you gotta do. You got to make an account using the link there that has the little Leon uh, source in it. Uh, once you create an account with the Leon source, you'll get added, you'll get some extras on Hashnode that you wouldn't have gotten if you just created a normal account. 
then once you've created an account, go ahead and fill out that Google form so I can start building the bracket for the tournament. Cool. Once again, big thanks to Sam for setting this up for us and big thanks to Hashnode for supporting this community uh, and for putting up such a bag for us to play Uno for. Your third blog post about networking goes up tomorrow. Hey, let's put it in, uh, make sure you put it in self promo and uh, I'll share out the first one. Alrighty folks. Now, if you open the newsletter today, uh, there would have been a lovely raffle for you. Uh, when we take our first break, when we take the first break, the Streamlabs just logged me out of, hold on. Yep. When we take our first break, uh, we will do the raffle when we come back from break. Uh, for those that don't know, sometimes in the newsletter, exclamation point newsletter, we post secret links that get you raffle prizes. Uh, you can't open the raffle unless you've uh, opened that link earlier. So if you have already opened the email and you filled out the form, you'll be able to contribute to the raffle uh, that we'll do at the first break because Streamlabs just signed me out. Boom. All right. Now, I don't know if you saw my tweet, but it was amazing. I don't know if you saw the, the Discord message right after class was over, uh, but I was so happy. We started yesterday's class with 21 jobs. During stream, during stream, we got another job. And then after stream, I checked my DMs and we had another one, another one. I'm telling you folks, I told you I had a little tinkle in my, a little, little twinkle in my toe that told me this week was going to be big. And uh, it has been. So uh, you had your warning here at the bottom. It's time to uh, say another congratulations to. Yeah, that 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 one's not balanced at all. That music is 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 popping off. Forty net, hey, congratulations on your new got. job. We don't we go got. get. We go <laughs> go get. get. Uh, congratulations, uh, that's huge. Uh, they're gonna share out more later on, but uh, big congratulations. Twenty three in the bag. Let's go. Let's go. Alrighty. 23 folks, let's keep it moving. And so many folks are interviewing right now. So many folks are getting references right now. It's going to keep going up. It's going to keep going up. Congratulations. All right. I said it last stream. I'm going to say this stream real quick. If you know prep, if you know your methods that we've been working on for the past month, and you can brute force your way with those methods through problems. It's all you need to get a wonderful job. If you're applying to the right level of jobs and you're doing enough of them, that's all you will need to get a fabulous job. All of the folks that have gotten jobs so far that I've shared with you, their interviews did not involve any of the stuff that we're about to cover tonight. This big O, this thinking a little bit more efficiently about our algorithm. They just, it just didn't come up. It just wasn't necessary. For hundreds of other students I've seen get jobs, it just wasn't necessary. What it does do is open a few more doors for you so that in certain interviews, you do well. But for a bulk of interviews, if you're applying to companies that are at your skill set and level of experience, you already have what you need to be successful. Does it still work? 
Y'all hear that? I don't have it monitored in my head. All right? You already have what you need to be successful. So as we go deeper into this stuff, right? As we go deeper into this stuff tonight and we get some practice on Saturday and we see uh, some, some little bit more on, on next Tuesday, know that we're, we're adding a little bit of essence on top. It's not something that is required to get a wonderful job. And I bring this up because it is one of the biggest fears people have when they start the hunt and they start going into this application process. So you're going to keep hearing me harp on this because it's that important. If you know prep, you know your methods well, and you can brute force yourself through app, through through problems more than enough. Now, will you lose some opportunities because that's all you know? Absolutely. But if you play the numbers game, you're applying to the appropriate companies, you will secure the bag. Cool. All righty. Let's jump into it. Let's talk through it this evening. Uh, hopefully you had a chance to look at the homework. Uh, if you weren't able to look at the homework, we're going to break this down. We're going to go for maybe an hour and a half. So much through this, and then we're going to stop so that you can do the homework uh, this evening. Let's just think about an algorithm tonight <laughs> as the steps you take to solve a problem, All right? Let's, let's think about that tonight. So tonight when I'm, when I say an algorithm, all I'm talking about are the steps that you take to solve a problem. That's it. <laughs> Thinking through appropriate algorithms, like the steps you take to solve a problem is how we can efficiently solve problems. Like if we can think through the appropriate algorithms, we can tackle our harder problems or any of our problems more efficiently. Okay. When we're talking about the efficiency of our algorithms, we're thinking about space and time. Space is really just how much memory is being used. So when we think about we're running our programs, our programs are running somewhere. How much memory is being used when those programs are running? Uh, each time we create a new data structure, we're taking up more space, we're taking up more memory, right? How many times are those structures created? That all led, lends to space, but we're not gonna worry about space tonight. We're really worried about time. And on Tuesday, we talked about time in terms of how many operations are executed per input, right? So as our inputs increase, how much more work are we going to have to do, right? <laughs> but I like space. Should I add this to the bank? Yeah, we can put this in the bank. Yeah. Cool. So time we're worried about, all right, as our inputs increase, like as, as, as our, as our inputs get more in number, how many more, how much more work do we have to do? How many more operations do we have to do? And when we're talking about the efficiency of our solutions, like as our inputs increase and the amount of work we have to do increases, we talk about that efficiency uh, in terms of big O notation. So big O notation is how we talk about this efficiency. It's how we talk about how much time, how much space is being taken up. But why? Why do we use big O notation? That's, that's the question that I had when I was first learning this. Like, why, why is this important? Why do we have this like special way of talking about it? And so big O on the surface is just a mathematical way of describing the complexity of an algorithm in terms of space and time. Remember computer science, right? We're, we're, we're learning about the math behind some of the things that we do. And since there's math behind so many things that we do, there's mathematical notation that we can use to describe the things that we're doing. But why? Why is this big O notation useful for us to discuss how efficient an algorithm is? 
And the reason why it's so important is that all of our code is running somewhere different. If I gave you a coding challenge, like I do every day in the daily, <laughs> the daily questions channel, right? And you're running that code. We might all be running that code in a different environment. You might be running it on Repolent. You might be running it uh, maybe let's say, uh, via, via your VS code, maybe in the terminal running, maybe you're running it in a node environment. So the code that we are executing not only is running on different computers of varying levels of strength, right? I got a pretty beastly computer over here, right? If I was comparing that to my laptop, my beastly PC might be able to do things faster than my laptop. So the code that we're running is not only different across computers, but we also learned about environments. Our JavaScript runs in environments. We've seen our JavaScript run in browsers. We've seen it run in an environment that's created for us via node, right? So if our code is running in all of these different places, right? It's running in all these different places and these different places might be faster at running code, right? How do we, how do we evaluate if the code I am writing is more efficient than the code that you are writing or vice versa? Well, we use big O notation as in different said earlier tonight to make rough estimations. Big O notation isn't an exact science in terms of like to the exact number, uh, how efficient our algorithms are going to be. It's going to give us some common language to make an approximation, to make an estimate, to give us a rough idea of how efficient our algorithms or our code really is. And this is really important because we're running our code on so many different places and so many different environments. And we want to be able to think critically at the code and not the environment where it's running. So to do that, we use big O notation. Does that make sense chat? Like why we would use that notation instead of kind of just like raw, like numbers of how fast things are executing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So we're, we're gonna, we're gonna see that tonight and I have a problem that we're going to try and solve tonight. And we're going to try and solve that problem by thinking through, <laughs> by thinking through the different ways to approach that problem in terms of big O notation. So we're going to see a real problem. We're going to think through it in terms of big O notation so that we can all come to an agreement on the most efficient way to solve that problem. All right. Like I said, we care about rough estimates. We're, we're, we're going to see that as we start to really understand big O notation, you might have seen some stuff. Chat, if, if you see, say yes or no. It's okay if you say no, it's okay, it's okay if you say yes. Have you seen where it's been like 2N or two instead of one, where like when you're looking at these big O notations, they're like adding extra numbers in front of it and things like that are happening? Well, all right, so we see some folks that have gotten it. All right, thank you, okay. Some folks have seen it, cool. So what we're gonna do is when we start to see those things happening, we're going to condense them down into the base things that we know so far. So far, we've seen constant time, linear time. We saw quadratic time. And tonight, we're going to add logarithmic time as well. So even as we start to see these like more complex notations, we're going to see that we can reduce those complex notations down into something that's just really those base cases. <laughs> Yes, but my brain ignores it. That's good. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get a rough estimate. We don't care about nerding out over all the individual pieces. If you want to, um, I'll put it in chat. Here we go. This is one of my favorites. You want to get really deep in all this stuff. You want to nerd out over it. You want to see the math. MIT has a beautiful breakdown of all of the big O, understanding it, the notation behind it, but that's not what we're here for. 
We're here to understand the base cases. We're here to understand the rough estimates, and that's gonna be enough for us to evaluate our code, especially as early career engineers. A <laughs> nine page breakdown, exactly. <laughs> But once you all are on the job and you're comfortable, you've, you've made it past that three month mark, you're, you're hitting your stride with your team, you all are gonna wanna start thinking about what can I do to take my engineering to the next level? And I'll tell you what, the MIT courseware that's all completely open has been, a, has been a godsend for me, really. I went through a lot of their stuff. I learned a lot, really good lectures. Even sometimes the problem sets and exams are all there. Uh, there was somebody named uh, Scott Young uh, that actually they wrote a book too about this uh, that did the um, the MIT challenge, they called it, where in one year they went through the entire CS curriculum on MIT's open courseware. So many opportunities to kind of continue to grow as an engineer, but we're going to worry about getting into that deeper stuff once we're on the job and somebody's paying us to learn. <laughs> Demi, that's funny. Alrighty. Amen. Exactly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the common complexities. Uh, we saw a lot of these uh, on Tuesday. I'm going to add one more. I want them to be fresh in our brains that when we take a look at a problem, uh, we know how to approach that problem. Alrighty. Here is this chart from the Git Connected article that has the big four notations that we're going to need to know. Next Tuesday, we'll add the quasi linear time, which is really funny to talk about, but it's basically n log n. So we'll throw that in uh, into it on, on Tuesday. Uh, when we get into more fancy data structures and we start talking about like stacks and queues and sorting and algorithms and all that fun stuff. But for now, these are the four that I want you to focus on. Quasi, I don't know, quasi linear. <laughs> uh, so here we go. We have our constant time. We have our constant time, uh, which we notice uh, for each input, whenever we're dealing with something that's constant time, right? For each input, right? No matter how many inputs we add, does the amount of effort or time increase for constant time? No, that's why we see it being flat. What is interesting in this chart is that for small data sets, uh, quadratic time is fastest. Yeah, let's talk about that. Once, once we get through today, let's talk about why um, for smaller data sets, some of this kind of goes out the window. But often if you are and I think the, the homework kind of hinted on this uh, pretty aptly. If you are dealing with small amounts of inputs, right? Like if you're only dealing with a very finite, short amount of inputs, do you care about the complexity or the amount of time? Does it, will, will it matter? Well, how long it take matter if you're dealing with a very small amount of inputs? It won't, right? If you're dealing with a very small amount of inputs, the amount of time or effort that it takes just won't matter. So yeah, stuff does get funky right here, but for the most part, we can we can say doesn't really matter. And according to Net, hit it, right? They said uh, in the homework, when you're dealing with small input sizes, you should probably optimize for readability over performance. And I agree with that entirely, but we will see why uh, in certain cases, my favorite one here is like thinking through why linear, right? Why linear uh, might be a little bit better than logarithmic early on. That's a really fun question to figure out. Like why might linear be better than logarithmic early on? But we'll come back to that. Once we reviewed all these, we'll come back to it. Tune said, how far along is this? We're towards the end, but all of our classes are on YouTube and you can join our Discord to start at any time. If you wanna learn more, exclamation point 100 devs in chat. All right, 
cool. Let's look at the big ones. Constant time, O of one. This means no matter how many inputs we have, there will only ever be one operation, right? <laughs> Sorry, softest. Softest got auto mod because they said, this is blowing me away. And the auto mod caught blowing me and then, <laughs> hold on, I can click allow. I'm like laughing, but I could just click allow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> mod be violent sometimes, the auto mod. Get out of here. That's hilarious. <laughs> Alrighty, when we're dealing with constant time, no matter how many inputs we have, we will only ever need one operation. So here's the example. We have one, two, three, four, five inside of our array here. If I want the first number out of this array, I will always just do the array with the index of zero. Chat, if I add a million inputs to this array, how many operations do I have to perform to get the first number? Throw it in chat for me, please. One, exactly. If I add 10 million inputs to this array, how many operations do I have to perform to get the first number? Still one, exactly, still one. So no matter how many inputs we enter or provide, we only need to do one operation. We're getting our spaced repetition in here, folks. We gotta let these things sink in. Uh, I think I missed Emma B. Thank you for the gifted sub to Yash. I'm sorry if I missed that. Thank you for being here. All right. Keep hitting that. Next, O of N. For every input, we will have one operation. This is linear time complexity. As we add a new input, we get another operation. So for every input, there's an equal operation and our time will go up linearly. And it's linear because for each input we add, we do a little bit more effort. Cool. So here's an example. Let's say I wanted to get the sum, right? I wanted to get the sum of all the numbers in an array. I could loop through that array and chat. Whenever you see a simple loop in JavaScript, what type of complexity should be popping out in your brain? When you're looking at your code wars or your elite codes and you see a simple loop, what type of complexity are we talking about? Linear, nice. Liquid words, hey, with the onward. Thank you for the 10 months. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's linear, exactly. Now, we're gonna talk about this a little bit later too, but we have lots of methods in JavaScript that are really just loops. Chat, what are some methods that we have in JavaScript that are really just loops? Can you think of some? We got a map, we got a for each, we got a reduce. <laughs> eight bearing soda said, let's get this money. A and D, thank you for the eight months. Thank you for being here. Yeah, so you, you named the big ones, right? We got a map, we got a for each, we got a filter. Since these are all technically just like loops underneath the hood, where are we starting at for all of these methods? Like if we're trying to evaluate these methods, where are we starting at? What type of complexity? Yeah, linear, O of N, linear, right? If they are just loops underneath the hood, the map, the reduced, they're all just, they're just loops underneath the hood, then we're starting at linear. Now, for, for bonus points, for bonus points here, we know that map, reduce, hey, Zabby, thank you for the gifted sub to, to Rob. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. We know that map, reduce, for each, 
Yes, they may be linear underneath the hood, but they all require a what? What do all of those methods need to do their job? Do I remember what it was called? What do they take in? Yeah, JSON web dev, I love it. Got it first. They all take in a callback. Now that callback could have any type of complexity in it. So if you've been coming to the daily standups, uh, one of the questions that kind of came up a couple of times are like, Leon, what's the complexity of this, this solution that's using methods? And it's always kind of weird to answer because, well, we know, oh, we we're popping off. Hey, Subtos, thank you for the nine months. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for being here. Right? It's always a little weird to, to answer because, well, we know that it's kind of linear, but that callback, depending on what the callback is, we might wind up in some sort of quadratic. We might wind up in something weirder. And then we throw things like sort into the mix as well. Well, then we, we get off into a whole different tangent. Hey, Bobby Lynn, thank you for the gifted sub. The soul, hey, there we go, right? So we're gonna start to see like why that is, but for now we know that if it's a loop, off our brain, we should be saying, all right, linear, linear, linear. Robo, hey, thank you for the 100 bits. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, sorry, 200 bits. Thank you so much. Are you going to touch on sort? That'll be next class. Next class, we'll do sort as part of the first part. Yeah. Accordionet, hey, thank you for the five gifted subs. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, we, I don't know if you're here for your congratulations, but it's well-deserved. Congratulations on the new job. Hey, and thank you for the five gifted subs. I appreciate that. Can we, uh, can we get a, a wall of emotes for accordionet to say congratulations, please? I'm going to throw mine in there. Let me turn while you're, while we're, while we're doing the moats, let me turn down the, uh, the alert sounds. Hold on. Let's see. Maybe if I turn down my, like my sound. Like the, um, try that first. Hey, there you go, accordion net. Congratulations. Hey, there we go. All right, that was a little softer, right? Uh oh, hold on, hold on. I missed, I, I think I saw a raid come in. Griffin, hey, CM Griffin, how you doing? Congrats. Hey, thank you for the raid. How you been? Let's go. Hey, I appreciate the raid. Thank you so much. Yo, if you all, if you're not following them, hold on. Let's, let's get, let's get that. Let's get that shout out here in our, in our channel. Chill. Always chill stream. Definitely give them a follow. Hold on. Hold on. We got to get this. I really need a shout out command. <laughs> There we go. If you're not following, go give them a follow. Chill stream. We got to set up a raid one of these days for sure to say thank you. Definitely go give them a follow, please. I'm all, I'm I I lurk. I'm in there. <laughs> uh, let's definitely let's definitely return the favor someday soon. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, what were y'all up to today? What were y'all working on or doing? Hey, Anonymous, thank you for giving them a sub. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And we had some other stuff that popped on. Hold on, that was, that was wild. That was a wild few moments there. Accordionet, once again, congrats on the new job. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Sheena, thank you for the 100 bits. Thank you for the raid. Anonymous, hey, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. I appreciate that. That's wild. Thank you so much. Anonymous, uh, thank you for the gift of stuff as well. I appreciate that. That's wild. Hey, the timing is wild sometimes. I appreciate that. Uh, everybody, if you're if you're new to what we do around here, we've been running a free 30-week uh, software engineering boot camp. And uh, we've been we've been hitting the road recently. We got 23 jobs already. A lot of folks are kind of just starting to get into the the we call it the hunt where they're interviewing. Uh, and so if you're looking for a, a job in tech, you want to learn some codes, uh, that's what we're here for. And tonight we're talking about big O. 
So we've just kind of introduced the basics of Big O. We're talking about some common problems where we're going to see Big O, uh, and we're going to keep it chill tonight. Uh, for a lot of folks, this Big O stuff is where a lot of fear comes into play, where they start to get uncomfortable in the interview process. And so we're treating this as the sprinkle on top of our kind of interview journey. Oh, Cordian, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Alrighty, folks. So here we go. We have a an array of numbers, and we are looping through each of those numbers and adding each number to a sum. As we add more inputs, right? As we add more numbers to this array, array we have a linear increase in the number of operations that we have to do. Each input, another operation. Input, operation, input, operation, input, operation, and we increase linearly, right? Now, the thing that, I don't know, if this blew somebody, if, you, if this blew your mind last class, can you just put like a, like a, either a mo or blow your mind emoji or just like a, a yes in your brain, like in your, in your brain, in chat. Cause this blew my mind when I first saw it. And I wanted to bring it up again. Cause it just, it just, it wrecked me the first time I saw it. Uh, for the folks that are new folks that came here from the raid, uh, this is uh Gauss's trick. <laughs> Dead Yankee. Um, and what it is, is if you have a continuous sorted array of integers that starts with the number one. So like you go one, two, three, four, you don't skip anything. It's continuous and it's already in order. You actually do not need to linearly move through to get the sum. You can just straight up take the last number. And if you take that last number, you add one to it, divide it by two and times it by the last number, you get the sum. So you go from something that would be a linear complexity to a constant time complexity. What? What? There's all these spelling mistakes here. I gotta fix these spelling mistakes. But after stream, I'll fix this should be a ray. <laughs> this should be a ray and this should be last item. There we go. Thank you, Yash. Right? And so we broke it down last time, but let, I just want to show it again, right? So let's say we have an array of one, two, three, right? Let's just keep it easy. If we did our sum, if we loop through, right? If we were to do this in a linear complexity, or if we did this in linear complexity, we would do one plus two plus three. So for each input, we did one operation. One, two, three, right? So for each input, we did one operation. But if we knew Gauss's trick, we could do one operation, which is to get the last number, right? In constant time. And we can do three times three plus one divided by two. We wind up with four divided by two, which is two times three, which gives us six, which is the exact same thing as doing one plus two plus three, which is six. What? That blows my mind, right? So we went for something that should be linear to something that's constant. And that's where kind of learning your algorithms can come into play. My math teacher lied, right? That's where, and this, this is spelled wrong here. This is where knowing your algorithms can come into play. You know, this algorithm, you bust this out in an interview. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You ever saw Vince Carter put their whole damn arm in the rim. That's what we're talking about. You do this in an interview. It's over. It's a wrap. One job, please. All right. Now we've also seen a lot of times, especially when you're, you're early on in your code wars journey, right? <laughs> when you're early in your code wars journey, you, you wind up with a lot of solutions that might look like this, right? I always wondered what the point of math tricks was, 
Reducing complexity is a really good reason time to start learning math. That's exactly what I thought. That's exactly my thought process. Um, I did MIT's like computer science, math for computer science course solely because I saw for certain scenarios, knowing the math helped. Now, do you need it for an entry level software engineering role? No, absolutely not. But once somebody's paying you to learn, you can explore all the things that you care about, right? So yeah, I definitely agree with that statement, OCT. All right, now early in your code wars journey, uh, this is what a lot of our code looks like. We wind up a lot of times where we have a loop inside of a loop, right? And whenever you see a loop inside of a loop, things should be firing in your brain. Uh, what type of, imagine this isn't here. What type of complexity, whenever you see like a loop inside of a loop, what type of complexity are we dealing with chat? Quadratic, exactly. We're dealing with n squared or quadratic. So whenever you see that loop inside of a loop, hmm, alarm bell should be going off. So let's come back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier. You have a map, you have a for each, you have a reduce, and the callback function that you pass in, if that loops, what do you wind up with? You're using a map, a for each, a reduce, and the callback is another loop. What are we winding up with, folks? Quadratic, oh then, right? So that's something we have to keep in mind as we're going through your, your code wars, your leak codes, things like that. Like, even though we're inside of a for each, we got we to be thinking about, all right, what, what, could, what could be happening here? All right. Now. <clears throat> when you're saying O of N squared, what we're saying is that for each time that inner loop runs, we're increasing by the power of two, right? Where... You have, all right, let's say the outside loop is gonna go one, two, three, four, five. Well, let's make this simpler, just so we can see why quadratic solutions can be problematic. Let's just, just let's type this out real quick. Let me, um, let me come over here just because we have something white to write on top of. Let's say our numbers were one, two, and three, just to keep this simple, okay? If we were to do, if we had a quadratic, if we wound up in like a quadratic situation where we were looping through these numbers, but then also had an internal loop that was looping through the numbers as well. Let's count the number of operations. On our first loop, we would do one, two, three. On our second loop, we would do four, five, six. On our third loop, we would do seven, eight, nine. Okay, so if we were to have those same numbers, one, two, and three, but we added one more input, one more input, we went, we were at nine, right? We added one more input. Now we're doing on the first loop, one, two, three, four. On the second loop, we're doing five, six, seven, eight. On the next loop, we are doing 9, 10, 11, 12. On the last loop, right? On the last loop, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So we added one input, but look how much our operations jumped. We added just one input, but that one input had a huge, substantial impact on the number of operations that we had to do. So you can think, this is just with one, two, three, four. Imagine getting into the hundreds, the thousands, how much more work you're going to have to do when you have a quadratic solution. For each input you add, you're going up by a power of two. And somebody asks, well, what if you had a loop inside of a loop inside of a loop? Well, you can do that as well. And what you'd wind up with 
is n to the third. If you had a loop inside of a loop, you would have an n to the to the fourth. We need some nuns, uh, nuns emotes here. All right, you would keep going up. Uh, this is, uh, I believe, this is called like if you're if you're just dealing with this, you're you're dealing with polynomial space, right? Like, sorry, polynomial time, right? You keep going up each loop you have inside of a loop, inside of a loop, inside of a loop, inside of a loop. That number goes from two to three to four to five. So if you had like a for loop inside of a for loop inside of a for loop, we're dealing with n to the third, right? And so we can keep going up polynomially, right? And then you can even get to the point where you're like saying, all right, what if, what if not only our exponent was increasing, but also our base was increasing. And then that's when we're talking about exponential growth, right? But don't worry about that for now. All right. <laughs> Oh yeah, I have Rockefeller. I need to put that GIF like in uh, the slides. Alrighty folks, before we introduce the new one, the next one, before we get into our, our logarithmic time, we're at the, t we're over our top of the hour time. So if you're new here, if you came from the raid, we like to be healthy. We like to take our breaks. So at the top of the hour, we always take a good break. So let me go ahead and bring up the timer put five minutes on the timer when we come back we're looking at logarithmic time and then we're moving into a practical problem that i have that i want to solve by writing efficient code let's go ahead and put five minutes on the timer here i'm going to bring up some chill music all right folks go ahead and take a break Any ideas for creating really good accountability groups? Yeah, that's something that I want to, um, to work on, but for now you can post in the code together channel to find a group, but I'm gonna work on a solution to get folks uh, working together. It's one of the big, big things that I'm working on right now. All right, let me get this um, raffle set up. Take a break, folks. Be able to get up, walk around, stretch. We'll be here when you're done. All right, it's getting this raffle set up. Hydrated me? Did I miss it? Hey, softest. Hey, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. I didn't hear with the music. I gotta figure out the balancing here. Two minutes of ads so folks can just jump in here so i'm gonna force the break go ahead take a break i'm gonna run the ads for two minutes um
I appreciate the bum money. Yeah, I'm gonna keep playing with it. Ready to study with this music? That's what I feel. Uh, name of this song, let's see. This is Light Wire, uh, which is part of the Stream Beats by Harris Heller. So Light Wire, Stream Beats by Harris Heller. Everybody got about a minute left. Go ahead and we come back, we'll have the raffle. seconds left folks all right Ooh, i'm digging the music i'm feeling this you gotta do some of those like just code along streams you just kind of like the pomodoro streams i'm down CC bringing out all the emotes for the recursion, eh? I, I just, uh, when you open it, like it automatically opens. So I just close it until folks come back. Alrighty, folks. If you opened up the newsletter before class and entered the secret raffle, uh, then I would like for you to go ahead and enter the raffle that is open now. There we go. Raffle is open. You can do exclamation point raffle in chat. Remember, if you enter the raffle and win, but you did not click the secret link in the in the email, you are you are immediately banned from everything. Discord, chat, everywhere. I'm itching to do the ban too. Exclamation point raffle in chat, folks. We had a lot of new follows today. I appreciate all the uh, all the follows. Cody, uh, Studio, Dino, Pickle, Wilster, Levo, Push, Anonymous, Ebit, Unbelieve. Hey, welcome everybody. Glad you're here. Melon, Layton, Open, Open AI. <laughs> I wonder if that's really that can't be really Open AI. That's funny. Uh, Myth. Tune at the uh, I welcome everybody. He will. All right, we're gonna leave the raffle open for another 10 or so seconds here. Exclamation point raffle. Will I be employable by the end of the stream? If you've been following along since the beginning, you're already employable. You don't need to wait for the end of stream. You're good to go. Alrighty, folks. Closing the raffle now and picking our winner. Hey, bearings photo. Hey, congrats. Uh, go ahead and click that link and you can immediately redeem uh, your prize. So just click that link and you'll be able to uh, check out with your prize. Congrats. And he said, just got here, never too late to start from the beginning. 100% agree. We have so many folks that are working through the YouTube channels at their own pace that get tons of help in Discord uh, and get uh, a good experience as well. So definitely join us. Exclamation point 100 devs if you want to learn how to join everything we're doing here. Exclamation point Discord if you want to join the best community to learn code live online. All right, folks, let me go ahead and chill the music here. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and talk about another one. Logarithmic time. Now, I don't like to go too deep into it and we'll get deeper, especially as we get into sorting next week. 
but I want you to be able to wrap your mind around logarithmic time more so than getting into the muck with code, especially like sorting code when you get into like end login and all that weird stuff. But for right now, we're just gonna talk about log logarithmic time. I'm gonna draw some stuff to help kind of um, figure it out. But before we do that, let's look at the, the chart here, okay? If we're looking at this chart, we can see that logarithmic kind of flattens out. Now it doesn't ever become constant, right? Like that's not a thing, but it does kind of flatten out, right? And what's happening here is whenever you're dealing with logarithmic time is that you're eventually with each operation having the number of inputs you have to deal with. You're having them, like you're cutting them in half, right? So with logarithmic time, as you do an operation, you're cutting the total number of things you need to worry about in half. So let's, let's do an imaginary scenario here. Let's say we had an array of numbers. One, two, three. And let's say this, this array of numbers goes all the way up to 1 million. Right? We have this array of numbers that goes from one to a million. I want to check if the number 500,000 is in there. Right? I want to check to see if the number 500,000 is inside of this array. Right? How, yeah, I can't say it right. How, ugh. I sound like I was speaking Norwegian or something. Uh, having, how, you're cutting them in half. Halving, I can't read it. I can't, what? This is like the pixel poxels debate thing again, right? All right, so we have an array, numbers one to a million in it. And I wanna see if the number 500,000 is inside of it. Now, if I was gonna do this linearly, right? If I was going to do this linearly, right? I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all the way to half a million. Right? All the way to half a million. And so that would be a linear way of getting to that number. But with logarithmic, we can do something really fun. With logarithmic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that array and crack it in half. Right? So I have that array, one to a million. I'm going to crack it in half. I'm going to look at this left half and I'm going to see the number 499,999. Chat, is 499,999 less than half a million? Yes or no? Yes. So since this, the biggest number in this half is less than the number that, we're, that we care about, yeet, we throw away that entire half. We just yeeted it into the space, all right? We bazoed it, it's gone. What's the other guy's name? We Bransoned it out of this world, right? It's gone. So far, we've only done one operation, maybe two, right? So with two operations, we've gotten rid of over half the numbers. Then I look at the other half. Oh, half a million. Boom. I found it. Let's imagine that instead of half a million, we're looking for something around this range. Let's say, let's say we're looking for 750,000, right? So let's go ahead and imagine we have our whole array. I, all I'm thinking about is hoagies right now. 
I just want a hoagie so bad right now. That's all I'm thinking about when I'm like, hold, I feel like I'm holding up hoagies. That's all I want right now. All right, so let's imagine we have our original array. We're going from one to a million, right? We're going from one to a million and I want the number 750,000. Rezo, hey, thank you for the hydration. Cheers to you. What I'm gonna do if I'm doing this logarithmically is I'm gonna crack that array in half. I'm gonna look at the number 499,999. Is that less than 750,000 chat? This, this is an easy answer. Great, so chat, what am I gonna do with this? All these numbers, one, the 499,999. What am I going to do with it? <laughs> Yeet them. Yeet. All those numbers are gone. Exactly. Branson them. They're Bezos. They're out of here. Great. Now I'm going to slide over this amount of numbers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack these numbers in half. Boom. This, these, this set of numbers was 500, half a million to a million was this set of numbers. And I cracked them in half. And when I crack them in half on this side, I have half a million to 749,999. So is 749,999 less than seven, 750,000? Yes. So I yeet those numbers away. I Bezos them, I Branson them. They are now gone. And I look at the last set of numbers that I have that is 750,000 to a million. And I look and there's the number that I want. So I really did like four operations. The first crack and check, maybe that's one or two. Yeet it half a million numbers. And then I took that, the remaining, cracked that in half, checked. Oh, that's 749,990. Boom. Thrown out, right? Right, thrown out. <laughs> Indifferent. And I'm left with the number that I care about. So if I was to do this problem linearly, if I was to do this problem linearly, how many operations would I have needed to get to this number? If I was to solve this problem linearly, how many operations would I have needed to get to that number? Exactly, RoboDom. Not rocket surgery, although this might be rocket science, but it's not rocket surgery, right? It would have taken us 750,000 operations to get to this number. But if we're doing it logarithmically, we're doing what? And would be like six. We're doing like six. Like one crack look, another crack look, another crack look. Right. And so we're literally halving the numbers that we have to look at by solving it logarithmically. This is called a divide and conquer algorithm. Right. This is a divide and conquer algorithm. Where we're just kind of like breaking in half. Right. All right. Can somebody solve it in? We solve it in, uh, can we solve it in constant time? Can somebody think of a, a way to solve this in constant time? We have to assume some stuff about this array. But if we're looking for the number 750,000, how could we grab it? Yeah, exactly, Izzy. Technically, we could do array index 749,999 and see if that equals 750,000. But that would be like constant time to see if that number exists, but that's just joshing, right? So we can see here that if we were to solve something logarithmically, we save a lot of operations. And that's why this curve looks so pretty. Look, 
as our input size increases, right? As sorry, as our input size increases, right? We can see we can see a slight rise, right? Like as we add numbers to a logarithmic solution, it does take slightly more time, but we're talking about really big increases in input size for this to really matter when you have a logarithmic solution, right? We're talking like a lot, a lot of stuff has to be added, right? For this to, uh, for this to have like a really impactful bit of effect on our algorithm. That makes sense, folks. Is that kind of like, cause we're, we're just cracking and we're yeeting half of the inputs. So even if we were to add a few more inputs, cause we're getting rid of so many each turn, it really doesn't, doesn't really increase the amount of time so much. Does that make sense? That idea. Now I'm not going to show you the code today. I'm not going to show you the code because I think it's too confusing for this for this first round. Uh, but on on Tuesday when we come back and we get into some sorting, we're going to see an, a, a clear example. I want you to understand the idea, uh, and we'll worry about kind of writing it out on Tuesday. Cool. All right. Now let's keep this right. Let's keep this idea in our brain. Come back Tuesday. Come back Tuesday and I got you. Let's keep this idea in our brain. Now, we said earlier, and we got it from the homework as well, right? That when we're dealing with really small amounts of inputs, we should be worrying about what chat? When we're dealing with a really small about really small amount of inputs, we should be dealing more about what? We should care more about what? Sorry. Clarity, readability, exactly. Because if we have such a small amount of inputs, the efficiency really doesn't matter here. So when we're dealing with really small inputs, readability is the more important piece. Uh, and if you haven't heard that yet, um, it's part of your homework this weekend to go back through that course. Shout out uh, Front End Masters for making that completely free. It's a really great course, completely for free. Now, let's think through this for a second. We talked about a solution that we could have solved. We could have solved it. Um, we could have solved it algorithmically. Sorry, we could have solved it linearly, but we could have also solved it uh, logarithmically as well. Linear versus logarithmic. Now, why, why like along this band? Like, let's look. Let's look here and below. Why is the linear solution slightly faster than the logarithmic solution with small inputs? Let's think through this problem, chat. Why is the linear solution a little bit faster, right? than a logarithmic solution with small amounts of inputs because math <laughs> exactly can we can we see it can we think about it theoretically though does the sort method do it logarithmically uh quasi linearly <laughs> which is n log n we'll get there let's go back to our the original solution that we were talking about also what's up rev how you doing let's go back one, two, three, four, one million. All right? Let's think about this. What if we wanted the number? What if we wanted the number? What if we wanted the number four? Hey, I appreciate that, Rev. What if we want the number four? If we were doing this linearly, how many operations would it take for us to get the number four? If we were solving this linearly, how many? Yeah, Rudy, we got it. Four. One, two, three, four. Four operations, right? 
But if we did this logarithmically, how many operations would it take? Let's think about it. We start with a million, we crack it in half. We look at half a million yeet, right? Then we have our smaller half. We crack that in half. We see 250,000 on this side and less than 250,000 on this side, yeet, right? Bezos, Branson. Now we have 250,000 in this chunk. We crack that in half, 125, yeet, right? Cracked 125 and the 75, yeet, 75. And so we're doing a lot more operations to get to this number four, right? So with lower inputs, the linear seems like it would be faster, right? Whereas logarithmically it would take a little bit more time. If you're doing all this like cracking nonsense and Bezosing and yeeting and Bransoning, right? So when we look at this chart, that's kind of represented here, right? That's kind of represented here. This idea that, all right, well, for really small amounts of inputs, we might be able to get to the solution slightly faster linearly than we might have done logarithmically. And this comes back to the idea that we're not looking for the exact numbers here. We're, we're, we're not looking for the, 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 the hundred percent mathematical logic here. We're trying to make rough estimations so that as engineers, we can talk about the efficiency of our algorithm. Are there edge cases? Of course. Are there scenarios where one might be better than the other? Of course. When we're talking, uh, when we're talking about like our larger projects, our larger ideas, we're trying to get these rough estimations. So that's what I want you to, to focus on here. I want you to understand that, all right, when I know that I'm just kind of accessing something out of an array, I'm dealing with constant time. If I'm doing some sort of divide and conquer algorithm, I'm doing it logarithmic. If I see some sort of looping mechanism in JavaScript, a for loop, a map, a reduce, these things that we know that are just loops underneath the, underneath the uh, hood, especially if there's nothing, especially like at the callback is just something constant, we're doing it linearly. If we start to see loops inside of loops, we know that we're looking at like a quadratic, right? So that's where I want you to be. I want you to be able to look at these base levels, right? these base levels and be able to come up with a rough idea of what's happening in your code and be able to talk about these pieces, right? We're going to take it one more step and start to see some algorithms and data structures that we're going to commit to memory. But right now, if you're doing code wars, you're doing your elite codes, part of your prep at the end, should be to evaluate the code that you've written and come up with, is it constant, logarithmic, linear, quadratic, right? You wanna be able to come up with the idea of what your code might be and start talking through it out loud. This is now part of your prep. So next week, when we're doing our daily standup, we'll talk about the notation behind the code that we've written. Uh, I think Tamsos, I think that'd be a good idea. I think it's something to be like, all right, can I, can I imagine that the inputs will be of an infinite amount that they could be really large, could be really small. That's something you might want to bring up. But will that open the door to have them bring down the complexity? Uh, you want to be practicing it right now for yourself, but if I'm in an interview and I've solved it and the interviewer hasn't brought up complexity, I'm probably not going to bring it up unless I feel really solid with it, right? Because remember, that's the sprinkle on top. If you're in an interview and you feel really confident that uh, you know the complexity, bust it out, put the sprinkle on top. For right now, we're practicing it so that you get more comfortable with it, but it's up to you. In the moment, do you feel comfortable bringing it up? How much time do you have? Because if you don't have that much time, it's worth it to bring it up so you can talk through what a more optimal solution would be without actually having to write the more optimal solution. I have seen so many students get out of writing a more optimal solution 
because they talked about the more optimal solution. So if you only have three to four minutes left or five minutes left, and you know, you can't bang out that optimal solution. You say, look, I feel like we had more time. I can come up with a more optimal solution. Like you asked, can we talk about the ways that we would optimize this, how we could bring this from kind of a linear to a logarithmic or how we could bring it from, uh, kind of this, this weird quadratic that we have to a linear, let's talk through it. And then, oh, sorry, we're out of time. I can definitely follow up after the interview with a more optimal solution, but I feel like what we cover together at talking through it is how I would go about it. And you'd be surprised how many interviews that get you through. <laughs> cool. Beautiful. <laughs> One job, please. I'll take it. All right. Committing these to memory is important. Um, these should be part of your, These should be definitely part of your Anki decks right now. You want to have the constant time, the linear time, the quadratic time, your logarithmic time is part of your, part of your Anki, right? And I appreciate that. Hey, right. You want to make sure that you're committing this to your spaced repetition tool. Uh, for folks that are new here, we use a tool called Anki for spaced repetition. So most folks, when they learn something new, it's very quickly forgotten. Uh, in some folks, just 20 minutes later, you've forgotten the things that you learned. By a month out, there's an 80% chance that you've forgotten the things that you've learned. So we use spaced repetition tools so we don't forget the wonderful things that we learn. Uh, you can do exclamation point learn and exclamation point study tips uh, if you want to learn more about that stuff. So in chat cool all righty chat i have a problem got a i got a big problem i haven't talked about the problem but it's a problem i'm gonna tell you about my problem or cowbell <laughs> got a problem i'm gonna take a sip of coffee real quick because it's, it's a big problem All right, lay it on you. Here it is. The price of boxes is too damn high. The price of boxes is too damn high. Now, what the heck am I talking about? I'm talking about Pokemon boxes here, folks. I'm talking about Pokemon boxes here. I am, uh, I am a collector of the Pokemons and, uh, Right now, these prices are getting redonkulous, ludicrous, just out of this world, <laughs> wholly out of control, right? Uh, so the, the real problem though, is that when you try and buy these boxes, right? You can go to eBay, but there's a bunch of fools on eBay, right? Bunch of fools on eBay. Look at this, this, right? Like swings and differences here where, where some of them are listed for 30,000. Some of them are listed for a hundred thousand. Some of them, I know this is, uh, some of them are listed for 7,000. If we look at this one, right? This is, this is an 80, a VGA graded 80, right? This is a VGA 85 just sold for $7,000. This one is of an inferior quality listed for 30,000, right? So if you are buying boxes right now, you don't do it on eBay. There's tons of Facebook groups that you're going to, to buy these boxes because eBay is just too wild right now. The problem with these Facebook groups is that you, you can't, you can't manage the, the bids, right? Like so many people want them. They're throwing out different offers. Like what I want, right? What I want 
is to create a bidding platform. Exactly, Izzy, to get rid of, the, to, to, to weed out the scammers, right? To weed out the scammers, right? To be able to keep track of bids, but not have to deal with the ludicrousness of eBay. Now, how many of you, I'm curious, at some time had a Pokemon red or blue? Did anybody ever have the Pokemon red or blue game? Could you imagine if you didn't open it, that it'd be worth thousands of dollars? If you had Pokemon Emerald and you haven't touched it, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. Same thing for Pokemon red and blue if you have it in good condition. Tens of thousands of dollars. All right. So what I want to do <laughs> is I want to create a bidding platform to, to get away from eBay, to filter out the scammers, to, to make sure that the, the communities that are buying and trading and selling these boxes have a place to do it that's safe and uh, easy to use. Okay. Fisherman says, I got heart gold in box unopened with a polka walker. Hold on. Fisherman said that they had a heart gold in box unopened with a polka walker. Boom, soul silver unopened with the polka walker. Should we play this again? We want to play this one again. Let's play it again. <laughs> Let's play this one again. This is a fun one. Did you, did somebody say 20th anniversary Pokemon 3DS? Hold on, hold on. I think somebody said it. I think somebody said it. Oh, new sealed in box. Okay. Somebody said it, right? <laughs> this is a Pokedex measuring contest. <laughs> Now you're just flexing. I hey, you know you brought it up, not me. You brought it up, not me. <laughs> but uh, I'm definitely jelly of the heart gold unopened. All right, all right. I get that on my system. So I wanna, I wanna create a bidding system here, <laughs> a bidding platform, folks. I wanna create a bidding platform. So let's talk about how we could create this platform. Uh, the first thing that I really care <laughs> about. Tell them about the Mew. Tell them about themselves. Tell them about themselves. All right. The Mew. People don't know about the Mew. Hold on. Let me. Have, I, I, it, right now I'm getting it graded. So I have the other piece of it though. Hold on one second. One second. One second. I'll tell them about themselves. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> I'm going to tell them about themselves real quick. Hold on. Hold on. 1999. Let me set the stage here, folks. 1999. Pokemon World Tour. Pokemon World Tour. I may have lost. I may have lost the competition. But I'm a winner. When it comes to the Pokemon collecting. 1990 year. What a year. On this flash cartridge, folks. On this flash cartridge is the backup of my Pokemon Blue cartridge, which I still have with a battery that works. On this is the backup 
of my Pokemon Blue cartridge. And on this backup is the original, the original Mew with certificate of authenticity. If you are a full Dex collector, I guarantee you, you do not have this in your collection. The original Mew with certificate of authenticity. And if you don't believe you, I was there. Boom. 1999 Pokemon World Training Tour. Tell them about themselves. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. So. I got a problem, folks. These boxes are getting ridiculous. Boxes are getting ridiculous. And uh, <laughs> I want to create a platform. But on this platform, what I really care about are the prices. I want to know the minimum bids and I want to know the maximum bids. Okay. I want to know the minimum bids and I want to know the maximum bids on this platform. So if folks are bidding, let's say on this Mew, right? How can we find the min and max bid? Okay. Let's say all the bids are in array. Yes. You know, let's go ahead and say that all the bids are in an array. Let's loop through all the bids. Let's, let's, let's write some vomity code. Let's write some vomity code. Right, we're going to write some vomity code here. And uh, we're going to find the maximum bids by looping through all the bids and comparing them to each other. Right? So this is kind of like the loop that we just talked about uh, when we were talking about quadratic solutions, right? We have a loop inside of a loop and let's say we have bids we have bid of one two three right we have bids of one two three what we're going to do is we're going to compare all right is this loop of one less than or greater than one two three then is this bit of two less than or greater than one two three is this bit of three less than or greater than one two or three so if we're doing a quadratic solution here this is going to take a lot of time to find our bids. So we have a problem. We're trying to build a platform and very quickly we can already, you all here in chat are saying, Leon, do not make a quadratic solution for this platform of bidding, right? If you are, <laughs> if you are thinking to yourself right now that this solution seems horrible, you are thinking like an engineer. Just maybe you are using big O notation to evaluate a problem as an engineer to determine that this is not an optimal solution. Right? So, <laughs> well, it seems like I've got a big O brain, <laughs> right? So we can see, all right, looping through all of the bids to find the max min bids, not a good idea. Probably not a good idea. Really bad code and the complexity would be quadratic, right? If we look, if we know we have that loop inside of a loop, we're doing that quadratic when we should be looking for at least the linear, right? At least the linear, right? At least the linear solution. Maybe we can get even, even a quicker solution, right? All right. Chat. Another solution I saw people throw out there was, what if instead of having a loop inside of a loop, we had one loop that found the min and one loop that found the max. What type of 
notation or what, or what type of complexity are we looking at here? If we had one loop that found the min and the another loop that found the max bid price. Hmm. Rudy's, Rudy's throwing out the notation that we might have seen. So you might have seen this before, right? Whoop. Where you're seeing this 2n pop up, right? So here's what it would look like, right? We would have a loop that went through and found the max bid and returned the max bid, right? And then we would have another loop that looked just like it that would return the min bid, right? So what winds up happening is we have two linear complexities. We have the linear complexity finding the max and we have a linear complexity finding the mid. So what you will see sometimes is two N, right? Two linear complexities, but when we're dealing with big O and we're trying to evaluate our algorithms, we're looking for what types of, uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for, an, I, I used a very specific word here. We're not looking for the exact math. We're looking for what? Use the word to begin with an R. What are we looking for? Yeah, we're looking for rough estimates. So, 2n can reduce down into just what? 2n reduces down to just O of n, right? It reduces down just to O of n. So even when we see 2n, right? We know that that's still what type of complexity chat? Because we're gonna reduce it down. What type of complexity? Linear, yep. So even though we had a linear followed by another linear, right? We know that we care about the rough estimates, the approximations. We don't care, right, about the exact number. We're just gonna reduce that down so that we can talk about the efficiency of our algorithm. When we see 2n, we know that's really just O of n or linear. Cool. Next question. What if in this bidding system that we built, there, the data was already sorted. So let, let, let's take that, the sorting out the, out the equation here. What if our data was already sorted, right? What, what could we get to? Ah, cat got it. Yeah, we could find a constant solution to our bidding problem. If our data is already sorted, right? We could do array zero, and array length minus one to get the min and max bid, both that accessing the first element in the array and accessing the last element in the array, these are both constant time operations. And so just like we saw 2n, some people might refer to, to this as O2, right? You might see this type of notation, right? where you have two, you went from O of one to O two, but we're here for the rough estimations. We don't want this to be something complex. So this gets reduced down to O of one, or whenever we see O of one, we call that what type of complexity chat? We would call this what? constant time, exactly. So as you start to look at more big O notation, you are gonna run into scenarios where you're doing two linear things at a time. And you might see something that looks like that, but we know that it'll reduce down to O of N or V linear. Sometimes you might see a solution that looks like this, but we know that that'll reduce down to O of one or be constant time. Cool. So chat, we're gonna do some quick spaced repetition here. Where are we at time-wise? All right, we're, we're doing okay, we're doing okay. Chat, what's an example of something that has a complexity of constant time? 
Give me an example that we've seen so far. Yeah, array index zero. Accessing an element out of array is definitely something that takes constant time. No matter how many inputs we have, accessing the first element out of array will always happen in constant time. Beautiful. What's an example of something that happens in linear time? What's an example of something that happens in linear time? Yeah, a loop. Whenever we see some sort of looping mechanism, that's just a one pass. We are dealing with something in linear time. Cool. What's something that is something that's an example of quadratic time? What's something that we've seen that's quadratic time? Yep. Nested loop. Like when you see a loop inside of a loop, we're dealing with something that's quadratic time. And... What's an example of something that can happen in logarithmic time? I gave you the, the word of what it was called, the specific kind of algorithm. What type of algorithm can we see in logarithmic time? Yeah, there we go. Divide and conquer. That's the, uh, the Bezosing or the Bransoning or the Yeating algorithm, right? Something that can happen in logarithmic time. So you all can now identify algorithms that exist in constant time algorithms that exist in linear time, algorithms that list in, exist in quadratic time, logarithmic time. And we're gonna add a couple other big ones to our repertoire on Tuesday. Um, before we get there though, you have some homework this weekend, it's gonna come through it. And tonight I wanna spend the last bit of our time working through some of the common things you're gonna run into JavaScript and try to digest underneath the hood what type of complexities they really are. But before we do that, uh, and before we explore these JavaScript complexities, uh, we're at the top of the hour or close to it. Let's go ahead and take our break. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a five minute timer up here on the clock. If you're new here, we'd like to be healthy. We'd like to take a break. Memphis, thanks for the hydration. Cheers to you. So, gonna bring up some tunes. If you are able, get up, move around, let your eyes focus on something that's not a screen. I'm going to put some music up, relax. <laughs> oh, we haven't had a YOLO in a while. Dinner prep time. I love it. All right, let's go ahead and take our break. You got five minute nap. <laughs> I am going to run three minutes of ads to force that break. And so that folks that join us afterwards don't have to sit through the ads. See you all in three, and I'm going to take a break myself too. Breakfast prep time. <laughs> I think Twitch is having a rough time today. Seems like the the site's like not loading that well. Anyway, was anybody having trouble with Twitch today? All their statuses stay good, but I was having some weird time with it. No, yes. Okay. All right, folks, about three minutes left. I am going to take a quick break myself. Burb.
chats don't want to load today. Yeah, I was having trouble with chats earlier today too, Will. That was the thing I was seeing too. Green is wonky for a little while. What are y'all having for dinner? Taco Bell. Ooh, that sounds good. Tom Yum Soon. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Pesto shrimp panini, eh? I don't know. My, uh, my brother is here. And uh, they are chefing something up. I can smell it. I don't know what it is, but it smells delicious. So I'm excited after stream. Seafood cocktail. Whew. Tacos and horchata. Nice. Beer salad, turkey sandwich. Okay. Oh, you all eating good tonight. Yeah, Memphis, what are you making for breakfast right now? <laughs> All right, folks, we got about 45 seconds left. Get that stretch in. Hopefully you've watched Dr. Levi, the fitness doctors stretching video recently i have gotta keep it fresh maybe you looked out your window so your eyes could focus on something farther away it's always a big help bring this for a long call folks long call here forgot about the stretching video it's so good it's so good All right, folks, three seconds left. Come on back. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drink a bit smaller. I'm gonna go ahead and chill the music here. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a good break. Hope you set up your meals. <laughs> everybody runs to go get the food. All right. Want a couple couple more things I want to go through um, before we leave for the evening, and we end a little early so that you can do the homeworks. Is that I want to go ahead and talk about some of the more common things that you're going to see in JavaScript. All right. So if we go ahead and Start talking about some things that we see regularly. Let's see if we can figure out what the complexities of these more common things we run into really are. So if you are thinking about the pop method, what type of complexity do you think pop might be? Folks are saying constant. Why, why would, why would pop be constant? What about pop makes it constant? Yeah, it's only one operation, right? You're only ever going to just remove the last one, right? And we can remove that last one in constant time. No matter how many inputs are inside of that array, we can simply do pop and get the last one. So one operation is constant time. Now you did the homework. Something a little weird. Shift. What does shift do? First of all, what does shift do to an array? What does shift do? Adds one to the front. So if we have an array and we add one to the front that seems like it might be constant, but it is not. And you all hit the nail on the head. It is not constant because every other element has to move one over, right? So if we add one to the front, the one that became the first element has to move over one. And then the next one has to move over one. The next one has to move over one. So by doing that one operation, we, we made a bunch of other changes that all happen 
linearly. And it's actually the same thing with unshift, right? Unshift removes from the front of the array, but when you remove from the front of the array, every other element has to shift to the left, right? What was at the first index is now at the zero index. What was at the 300th index is now at the 299 index. So it's a little odd because pop is actually constant, but shift and unshift become linear based on how arrays work in JavaScript. Whoa. Yeah, sorry, I switched AI, I missed it up. Shift removes, unshift adds. I always forget those two. Cool. <laughs> exactly, I'm going to be. How about length? Length is a really interesting one. This one blew my mind. When I was first learning this stuff, this blew my mind. It didn't blow my mind. It was kind of more the JavaScript blowing your mind. Like once you understand what JavaScript really is, if we want to get the length of an array, what type of complexity are we dealing with? People are saying linear, and that's what I would have thought at first, too. It's constant because length is a what? By looking at length, just by looking at the length, what is length? What is length? What is it? <laughs> what is it? It's a, yeah, it's a property right? It's a property on an object, right? And so looking up a property on an object happens in constant time. You don't have to linearly move through something to get the length. Arrays, and this is what blew my mind, right? Arrays are keeping track of the length along the way. So every single time you add something to an array or you remove something from the array, the length property is already updated. So when you want to get the length, all you're doing is accessing an object that has a length property and some value. So accessing that value happens in constant time. What? 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 Isn't that wild? Who my mind? Not in JavaScript, BT, because they're they're all objects at the end of the day anyway. Cool. All right. If we're dealing with for each's maps reduce in JavaScript, uh, we're dealing with what type of complexities, folks? Yeah, what type of complexities are we dealing with? That's why hash maps are fast, right? Exactly. Maybe. They start off linear, right? They start off linear, right? They definitely start off linear, but depending on what happens in the callback, we could be dealing with something else, right? Linear, but depending on what happens in that callback, it goes down in the callback, right? <laughs> I cracked myself up. It doesn't go down in the DMs, it goes down in the callback, right? So depending on what goes down in that callback, we start off with linear, but we might wind up in quadratic, some sort of polynomial. It, it could get way worse. We're going to get the hash maps on Tuesday. So if folks are kind of a little lost on that one, we'll get there. But uh, when we get the hash maps on Tuesday, it's really just going to be basing off of the same thing we just know about length. Cool. That's it, folks. That's what I wanted you to get to this evening. I wanted you to have a good understanding of constant time, linear time, logarithmic time, right? And quadratic time. I wanted you to see some examples to think through a problem. And I wanna leave enough time tonight so that you can take your first step. I want every single person that's here, here on this stream, right? If you're here on this stream, your night is not over, your morning, your afternoon is not over yet. I need you to do one thing before you're done today. And the thing that you're going to do is take a step towards your application. 
whether that's sending an email to a recruiter, whether that's reaching out to somebody on your hit list, I want you to take a step towards an application. I don't care if you're brand new to the, to this stream, take a step towards an application tonight. A cold message on LinkedIn, whatever you got to do to take that first step, I want you to do it. And then I want you, if you have some time to work through this front end masters course that is completely free, you have to create an account, but it's completely free. And I want you to get through this whole course this weekend. There's about two to three hours worth of content here, right? Can we do a two Q instead? No, I need you to take a step towards your application. You're gonna take a step towards your application and then you are going to start working on your algorithm. So we're gonna end it there tonight. Uh, we're, we're not gonna do a raid because I really do want you all to take that first step, reach out to a recruiter, hit somebody up on LinkedIn, get through this material so you have some time. We're back together tomorrow for the tea spill session. We're back together on Saturday for our code jam. And then we're back together on Sunday for office hours. We're 23 jobs in folks. Let's get the 25 as soon as possible. So it can be a quarter of the way there. You all can do this. You are ready. Take the first step. All right, folks, have a wonderful rest of your night. Hope this was engaging enough for it to kind of sink in these big topics. Hope you had some fun and I will see you all tomorrow at stand up. All right, folks, have a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. Peace. Be well.